Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Rest World. Today is another Saturday game. OxyJets versus British Airways. I'm going to put the table here. It's 10th versus 11th. Also, I'm going to speak about recent results. As a referee or player or manager, do you look at league position? Do you look at recent results? Uh, just to kind of give you a gist of who you're playing or who you're refereeing. Let me know if you do that. I know a few referees, they just go into the game and they don't look at league table because they don't care. Me personally, I like to look at recent results where they are in the table. Uh, not that it makes a difference, but I just like to see recent performances, how they're doing in the league and what kind of game to expect if it's going to be close, if it's first versus bottom, because in these leagues, budget makes a big difference. So uh, yeah, that's why I look at league tables, but let me know if you do too. So uh, I'll put OxyJet's results here. Uh, as you can see, they just recently lost to Burks County 9-1. Uh, they lost to Bedfront 5-1. And then if we go and check uh, British Airways' is recent results, they've lost the last couple of games. Um, they lost one to uh, Westside in the Cup, who's in this division as well. But they also beat Burks County first game of the season 4-2. Uh, they drew to Bedfront 2-2. Uh, they drew to Langley as well. And uh, OxyJets lost to Langley. So a few results I've picked up. So on paper, British Airways should win this game. But it's football, so who knows? I'm going to go into there with no expectations. One sit in 10th, one sit in 11th, so it's going to be a really close game. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the last uh, Saturday episode, Rising Ballers versus Berks County. I thought that was really good. Uh, I'm glad it went well, so hopefully it goes well again today. I'm going to show you more pre-match stuff because uh, last week kind of jumped into it just because the observer was there, so I didn't want to bring out my phone or camera. Uh, so just going to show the pitch. It's at Bedfont's home ground, so Bedfont and British Airways. Uh, they share, they pitch share, uh, so the pitch is really nice last time I went there, hopefully it's more of the same today. Uh, so I'm going to show you the pitch, uh, show you what the managers or um, chairmen have to do, so they have to bring in the team sheet at least 45 minutes before kickoff, and then obviously I look at it, make sure no kit clashes, no keeper kit clashes, uh, there's a physio there, or someone's marked down as a physio, manager's marked down, and I also like to have a captain marked down, uh, just because I can introduce myself when we're lining up and just say a quick hello. Uh, so yeah, it goes like well from there. So we just establish a good rapport. But yeah, I'm going to make my way to the ground now. I'm just going to get a train there again. Blackwall Tunnel is close southbound. So on the way back, it's going to take like two, three hours to get back. It's going to be a nightmare. So I'm just getting a train up to Feltham. Uh, it's not the closest venue. 2pm kickoff. I'm going to record that game as well. My favourite cup competition, the London Cups, Panda FC versus SW alumni in the first round of the London Sunday Challenge Cup. Why is it my favourite competition? I've won two county cups as a player and they've both been London Cups, uh, London Sunday Trophy and London Sunday Challenge Cup. Also officiated in the London Sunday Challenge Cup final in my first season as an assistant. Uh, that was Trabzon Spore versus Hatch Lane. I want to get a referee appointment for one of the finals. So that's one of the goals this season. But anyway, let's uh, focus on today's game. Going to make my way to the ground now and hopefully show you some pre-match stuff. Uh, these are the team sheets you get given for the Combined Counties Football League. Uh, just quickly, the blurred bits are just the starting 11, the benches uh, on the right is the managers, coaches, physios. And right at the bottom is where someone has to sign. So I've just blurred their names out. Uh, so starting at the top, the team sheet is for British Airways, the one on the left, uh, the division that we're playing in, uh, what day it is, the date of the game, uh, the competition. They can just cross out or circle, uh, name of the home club name of the away club and also uh, the kit colours for both teams. So it's good to get the team sheets at the same time so you can just go over it quickly, make sure there's no kit clashes uh, for the outfield players, especially the goalkeepers. And then once it's all fine, taking the team sheets and we're good to go. Here we go, team walkout, captain team talk. Then we're jumping straight into the game. British Airways in the navy blue, Oxy Jets in the green. I hope you enjoy this match. Well, it's 
Not really a lot happening in the first 25 minutes. You see a foul here. Um, the four kicks the ball away, but it was straight after the whistle. So I was a bit lenient with him. I pulled him over to the side, just told him not to pick up a silly booking by doing that. Just going to quickly talk through this one. As you can see, the British Airways player comes off slightly worse. You can see the Oxy Jets player wins the ball. Uh, let me know if you would have given a foul for that. And that's the half-time whistle, British Airways 1, Oxy Jets 1. Um, it's been a very quiet game. I didn't realise there were so few fouls to show, a few that I haven't given. As you've seen, uh, let me know how you think I'm doing this half. I feel like it's gone fairly well for me and uh, both of my assistants. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the second half, where it gets a bit more interesting. I hope you enjoy it. And just like that, five minutes into the second half, there's been three goals, one plane, and British Airways lead this game 3-2. Uh, let me know if you thought this one was a foul. I was in a good position here. Maybe just a little bit too close, but it did look like the three got the ball for me. Uh, let me know if you would have given a free kick uh, if you thought that was a foul. Our first yellow card of the game and you can see here, yeah, he's late, has to be a yellow. And when I tell you that player literally just came on the pitch as well, it was his first involvement in the game and he's going in the book, our first yellow card of the match. Our second yellow card of the game, I went to play advantage, but then the defender got up and said something to the player, so I didn't want anything kicking off, uh, so I've blown up for a free kick and issued the yellow card very quick. Uh, could have been a mass con, uh, but credit to both teams moving their players away to prevent that. I also could have been careful here because I had a lot of players behind me. I should have taken a better view, maybe further out, just to see everyone coming together, just in case something happened behind my back. And that's the full-time whistle. British Airways win the game 3-2. 
3-2 crazy start to the second half and uh, then it calmed down a bit it was very closely contested two yellow cards in the game uh, no key match incidents to be fair uh, I thought that I had a good performance as well as my two assistants so let's head over to Moas and see the club reports here we go club report time as you can see I'm on Moas so let's go on to the game there you can see it's changed the club reports available uh, British Airways versus OxyJets as you just saw I feel like I had a good game so I'm hoping for scores of around 80 8 and above will be great uh, so let's find out what teams have scored us pretty good 85 from the home team as you can see here and 84.3 uh, from the away team who were the losing team on the day as you saw in the video and they scored us pretty high uh, so let's go and find out from the club reports how they scored us team first uh difficulty of game average i would agree with that i don't think it was difficult or very difficult and as you can see here in between good and very good they've scored us all down there uh that means a score of 85 no additional comments uh from the assistant referees or just the game in general uh let's go and check the away team's reports hopefully the x's are in different places and then we can speak about it. if not we'll just speak about that club report uh, so let's go on to Club Report 2, which is the away team. They scored us 84.3. Uh, let's find out how we did from these guys. And this is perfect. This is the Club Report I wanted to see. So a difficulty of game average. Again, I would agree with that. Uh, judgment of major decisions. They scored us in between good and very good, as you can see. Uh, I don't think there was too much to judge uh, in terms of major decisions. There was no penalty shouts, uh, no red card shouts, nothing like that. Uh, so that's why that is pretty high. Uh, general decision making, again, in between good and very good. Again, I feel like I controlled the game well. I feel like I had a good game, so that just shows I have even the home team scored it like that. Match control, very good. Uh, got along with both teams, to be fair. There was no problems on the day. Uh, comment section, I don't know why this is in the middle. Maybe this should be below at the end. But it says uh, in the comment section, on top of everything, very approachable also. Excellent, that is so good to see and uh when teams take time to do the reports and i can see this it's like amazing because it gives me feedback on my uh, performance and that's just really good to see i like building rapport with uh, clubs and players so it's uh, good to see that that paid off uh communication in between good and very good always try to communicate with players fitness expected disappointed in that one because every single report i've got that's been done properly my fitness has been like all the way to the top uh so expected fitness I've got to get fitter. That's the only thing I can say. I've got to get fitter. And uh, general control and player management, very good. As I said, I try to get along with players and teams on the day, try to explain decisions and um, any questions they ask. I want to be approachable so we can make the game easy for myself. That adds up to a score of 84.25. So not 84.3, 84.25 is the accurate score. I guess they round it up. And uh, section three, do you require feedback regarding this referee's performance? They put no. And uh, section four, assistant referee comments. It says, very good team of three. Great to hear again. Uh, on the day, I felt we worked very well as a team of three. Lots of eye contact, uh, no miscommunication going on, no going opposite directions with throw-ins. I've worked with one of the assistants before who was far side, me and him. We just know how to work as a referee and as an assistant. Uh, we both know each other's games and I feel like they could see that. And uh, the bench side assistant, Never worked with before, but again, me and him uh, worked very well together, took time on decisions, looked at each other, and um, yeah, we never went opposite directions, and it looked like we were professionals, so that's great to hear. Uh, so as you can see from the reports, very high scores, 85 and 84.25, I can round it up to 84.3, highest scores of the season, I think my previous highest score was uh, 81.3. So then that beats it, both of them beats it, which is very good. Like I said in the video, I uh, felt like I had a good performance and it's good to see that clubs think that as well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed me going over that report. I could do it a bit properly this time as both clubs done it, uh, as both clubs done the report properly. So it was able to give me an insight on how I performed. And yeah, hopefully I can bring you more Saturday football, more club reports. Uh, we'll see you next week uh, for another match on Rest World.